What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin Ho from Austin Ho Audio and Visual and Make Pop Music, and I'm back to do another tutorial today. And in today's video, I kind of wanted to cover reverbs and delays because we get a lot of questions on those. So there's a couple things that I want to address. I want to first talk about when to use a reverb or a delay on an insert, just like on your track, versus when to use them as like a send or effects track, uh, basically parallel. So I know I get a lot of questions on that, basically, when are you just sticking it in your chain and when are you using it as like a parallel insert? So we'll kind of dive into different instances that you can use for those. And then I also wanted to talk about just a couple different styles of reverbs and delays and kind of the different characteristics that they bring and the different functions and forms of those. So basically we'll talk about like different kinds of short delays, long delays, short reverbs, long reverbs, etc. And then I also want to kind of go over things that you can do on your reverb and delay sends just to give them a little bit of extra spice and characters. Now that we're actually in the session, let's go ahead and talk about insert versus send, right? So typically the way that I look at it is if I want the delay or reverb to kind of be part of the production aspect of it, like the actual building the sound aesthetic, I'll use it as something like an insert. So if I'm doing an ad lib where I want a really, really specific type of delay and reverb, I'll use it as an insert. If I'm you know, processing synth or something like that, I'll probably just use it as an insert because those are gonna be really, really specific forms of reverb and delay that I'm making just for that one element. So if I'm making it for only one element, I'll go ahead and use it as an insert unless I need to do something super, super specific to process that reverb and delay. So let me just give you an example of kind of an inserted delay that I have. So we've got the ad libs right here. And you can see that I turned off the sends and instead I've got H delay right here doing a fourth ping pong stereo um, filtered out. Let's go ahead and turn that analog off. And then I've also got a really, really long hall reverb. So this reverb is way longer than what I would have on the main vocal, which is the reason that I didn't end up having this as a send is because I don't need another two and a half second reverb for almost anything. And since Verb Suite has a dry and wet knob, that acts as a lot of the function of a send. So I'm able to just dial this up or back based on how much I want it. So let's drag the pre-delay up and attack up a little bit. So attack is basically going to be how long it takes for that reverb to like swell it. It's kind of like the um, the aggressiveness of it coming in and pre-delay is actually how long it's going to take to come in in general. So pre-delay is typically what I go for first and then if I want something to come in a little bit softer I'll kind of drive up the attack just a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a listen to this. So here's what it is without. Check it in the terms of the mix. So as you can see, it works really, really well as an insert because it's doing exactly what we want on that one specific instance. But as you can see here, we've got a couple different like lead vocal tracks. We've got some stacks, some doubles, all of that kind of stuff. Those are all going to want the same style reverb and delay because they're all going to want to sit in the same space, right? So we've got all of these vocals right here. I lost, like everything falls apart. Just tell me when it's over. I'm so sick of feeling when I ask you. So for these, I wanted to go ahead and do my sins. So you'll see me talk about the sins a lot, especially on like my vocal processing and mixing videos. So this is just my widening, that's just the dimension D. Now let's talk about why I'm using these as sins what different kinds of reverbs and delays I'm using, why I'm using those, and then how you can actually go into your sense and spice those up, right? So the first one we have is a long reverb. So to me, this is gonna be probably either a plate or a hole for vocals. Um, and typically, I'll just end up going to something like Verb Suite or some kind of like Lexicon plugin to really get that big, open kind of long reverb. So we actually ended up going with a pretty long haul on this because the song is a bit more open, a bit more spacey, and a bit more vibey. So um, I'll just kind of show you the difference. So this is the BM7 Concert Hall 1. Sometimes I'll go with something like a vocal plate, which is like one and uh, kind of like one and a quarter, one and a half second decay. I loved and I lost like everything falls apart. <laughs> But that wasn't really enough for me. I wanted it to be pushed back a little bit in the mix. I wanted a little bit more space and a little bit more ambience. So I did end up going with this concert hall. Lost, 
Like everything falls apart. Oh, oh. As you can see, it's just a lot softer of a reverb. It kind of sits farther back. His vocal almost feels drier because the reverb is just farther back in the mix. And then that reverb just adds a really, really, really nice tail to it. So um, things that I'll typically use for my decaying kind of reverb on vocals are halls and plates. Sometimes a chamber will work. I'll normally use chambers on like strings or pianos or synths. Um, and the whole point of this kind of reverb is to basically give it some sustain, give it some length, and then give it some depth. So this is going to push it a little farther back in the mix. It's going to add a nice little tail to it. And then this is another reason that I'm using sins is because not only can you kind of mix in the dry and the wet. So like if I want way more reverb on this, I can uh, just tell me when it's over. I'm so sick of feeling when I ask you. So you can really, really nitpick uh, how much reverb you want in. But not only that, a lot of the time, reverbs to me have a lot of low end that kind of builds up and a lot of high end that builds up, especially if you're driving them really hard. So what I like to do, and a lot of people call this the Abbey Road trick, is basically go in and you can actually EQ the lows and the highs out, right? So let's take a look at what we're doing here. Then I lost, like everything falls apart. And just tell me when it's over, I'm so sick of feeling low. So you can see you can really go as aggressive as you want with this, right? You can either do something like this. And just an I lost, like everything falls apart. I like getting a little bit more in, um, probably like, I normally go anywhere between like 300 to 5,000 and like 300 to like, well, 300 to 3,000 and then 300 to like 6,000. Um, I don't really want a lot of top end in because it'll just add sibilance and it'll kind of start getting in the way of the dry vocal. And I don't want a lot of low end in because it'll start just making the vocal sound really, really muddy and kind of gross. Like everything falls apart. But let's say you were like hearing this really, really weird kind of room node that you didn't love. I lost, like everything falls apart. You can just scoop that one out of the reverb. So you've got options to do stuff like that. Another thing that you could do is you could do something like S1 to where you widen out your reverb. So you could even make your reverb bigger. Like everything falls apart. And just tell me when it's over. I you could do something like that. You could do something like adding a chorus. Lost, like everything falls apart and just tell me when it's over so when you're using these as sins you've got the option to basically set the delay or the reverb first in the chain and then you can process just that reverb signal so if i want to basically only EQ the, the reverb or only add saturation to the reverb or only widen the reverb i can do all of those just by putting the reverb first in the chain and then processing after that and then that whole sound is going to be what's coming back to this lead vocal that i'm mixing in here so right now it's like negative 15 of uh gain coming back into it as a return so that's why i'll use synths kind of on my main vocals or maybe on my main synths is because if there's something really specific that i want to do I can add the perfect style of reverb that's going to be perfect for all of the lead vocal elements. Then I can go through, I can kind of EQ them all. I can go ahead and, you know, get them in the right spatial processing. Do I want them wider? Do I want them more narrow? I can add creative effects like chorusing, bit crushing. We'll do some more stuff on delays in a second. But let's just talk about another vocal sin that I have for reverb. So I'll also do a short reverb in addition to the long one. So let's go ahead and solo out that lead vocal one more time. And let's take a look at what we're doing. So on this one, I've got something like a small vox reverb. Uh, seven. I normally do like 500 to 800 milliseconds on this. Just because I want it really, really short. I want it really tight. Um, it's kind of like that bathroom vocal sound you'll hear a lot. Loved and I lost. Like everything falls apart. And just tell me when it's over. I'm so sick of feeling low. 
So I mix this one in pretty subtly in the background. I don't want this at the forefront. Um, and the reason that I'm using these short reverbs in addition to the long reverbs is because when the long ones add sustain and depth, these short ones are adding a lot of width. So I'll go with something that's really short and really wide. So that way uh, it's not really adding a lot of sustain or depth to the actual vocal. It's just going to go ahead and widen it quite a bit. So. Uh, you know, you also have the option to go ahead and, and EQ it after the fact if you want. You've got the option to do all those things on the send. But the cool thing about a send is like I'm able to mix it in with all of the lead vocal tracks, you know, kind of however I want to for each individual one. Let's move on to delays a little bit. The first delay that I do is normally a slapback delay. And this is really similar to like the room reverb. I'll use a slapback delay specifically so I can add some width and just add a little bit of kind of short sustain. So this is going to help the vocal kind of thicken up and widen up to sit in that mix a little bit better. And I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about. I loved and I lost like everything falls apart. And just tell me when it's over. So as you can see, it's doing a similar thing to the room reverb to the short one but uh, it's a totally different quality. And let's go ahead and look at actually what's going on. So you have to offset the phase on either the left or the right. And then I normally like to have it between like 40 and 80 milliseconds, depending on just the tempo of the song and, and kind of how it's vibing. I'm not one to really go in and do super, super um, specific equations to like get the exact amount of millisecond delay that I want on my pre-delay and on my decay and all that kind of stuff. I'll just kind of time it out by ear and if it's giving me an issue you can use something like a calculator to kind of calculate well I want that reverb to come in a 30 second later so what is a 30 second at 144 BPM or whatever and then that'll give you the millisecond and then you can just kind of time it in here. But basically what I'll do is I'll just kind of feel it by ear, right? Did I lost? Like everything falls apart. So that's way too much. That's starting to become audible. And just tell me when it's over, I'm so And that's too short. When you the the smaller you go on the actual delay, the more narrow it's gonna get. So that's why I'll typically keep it kind of in that like 60 to 80 realm. I think we had this in like the 70s. So sick of feeling low. So what that's doing is that's actually giving me an audible difference between the left and the right. And then I like to just filter out the highs and the lows in the plugin. And then, of course, if you wanted to, you could go in and kind of EQ it out just to create some space. I didn't really need to. This one was working just fine. So let's hear it now with that and the long reverb and the short reverb. And I'll kind of just explain the reason that I use something like a Dimension D or a Chorus to widen, and then I'll use a short reverb to widen, and then I'll use a slapback delay to widen, is because all of those things can get really, really wonky and artificial sounding if you're driving them super hard. So I like to use all of them in different kind of, different spectrums and kind of different intensities. That way, uh, you know, I get a little bit of flavor from the Dimension D, I get a little bit of flavor from the Room Reverb, and I get a little bit of flavor from the Slapback. So we're adding a lot of width and depth in each of those specific categories. However, I'm not absolutely just ruining my vocal mix because I've just driven like a chorus effect insanely hard. Because uh, I don't want that effect to really peek through. If I want that effect to peek through, I'm probably just going to add it as an insert, right? So. That's kind of what I'm doing for those. And then this is really kind of my bread and butter for my vocal mixing is my long uh, delays. And I typically almost always do stereo delays just because it's just one more little added thing for the stereo field to kind of keep you interested. If I do want a mono uh, delay to kind of be a little bit longer like this, it's, it's really easy. It's just a flip of one button. So let's go ahead and look at what's going on in my stereo delay, right? So I've got a one fourth ping pong and 100% wet. If you're using it as an insert, you're going to want it 100% wet. If, or, I'm sorry, if you're using it as a send, you'll want it 100% wet. If you're using it as an insert, you can blend the wet and dry. That's kind of going to be like how hard you blend it on the actual monitor kind of right here itself. So this is your wet and dry function for your sends. Therefore, just have them 100% wet. If you're not having them, if you're having them over here, go ahead and use that wet and dry knob kind of as you would process that. But and I lost, like everything falls apart. Oh, so I really like one fourth or one eighth delays um, just because I feel like they give you a lot of that tail. Um, because I don't like to drive reverb super hard. If you start driving reverbs way too hard, you do get that nice tail at the end, but it does start to put your vocal back in the mix and it starts to sound a little bit amateur and just kind of 
eh, like it gets really dull, it gets really dark, and it, it doesn't really like punch in the mix like you want it to. So I'll go a little bit drier with my reverbs, and then I'll use something like this to kind of start to add that sustain at the end, right? So you've got something like this. And I have a really short feedback, it's probably only delaying twice. Um, I don't want it to just keep delaying and keep delaying. I could probably even shorten this up a little bit more. Just like everything falls apart. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and actually pretty heavily filter out that delay. So I like kind of having that telephonic kind of really, really mid heavy sounding delay uh, just because it gets it out of the way of that main vocal, right? So that main vocal is really full. It's taking up most of the spectrum and I want that to kind of shine in the center. So I just want this to kind of add a little bit of flavor on the end and it really only needs it in the mids. Part just tell me when it's over I'm so sick of feeling You can see that it's not really taking up a lot of room and I lost. So I'll do that just to get it out of the way and then typically since I'm wanting it at the end to add a little bit of sustain like a reverb would I don't want that delay to be super dry so you could either add a reverb as an insert here but I'm actually just sending it back to that long reverb the same one that my main vocal is going to anyway just to kind of give it one more space to tie back in and just sit in nice so now we can go ahead and listen to kind of all of these things and I'll go ahead and just turn on the vocal parallel I loved and I lost like everything falls apart oh, uh, Just tell me when it's over I'm so sick of feeling when I ask you So you can see that I'm using each of those reverbs for a very, very, very specific purpose, either to add depth or to add width or to add sustain or to just thicken it. Um, so they're all doing something really, really specific and each reverb has a different purpose. So. When you're doing that, kind of make sure that every reverb or every delay you're adding is serving a purpose because it's really easy to just add way too much and shit just starts getting muddy and messy and it's kind of all over the place. So make sure that you know what you're adding and why you're adding it. If you want something with a little bit of width, go shorter. Go for like a room reverb or maybe like a nonlinear kind of reverb. If you want something a little bit longer, maybe go with like a plate or a hole. If you want something really long, go with something like a bigger hole or a chamber or maybe even some kind of ambient uh, reverb. And then for your delays, do you want something mono? Do you want something stereo? Are you going slap back? Are you going one eighth? Are you going one fourth? Are you going really, really long and doing like a whole bar delay? Um, there's all of those things you can do. One more thing that I like to do too, if I'm just wanting a reverb or delay throw on like one specific word, is I'll actually go ahead and kind of duplicate this main track, right? And uh, let's just hear where we want to do one. I loved and I lost like So let's do I lost, right? So I'll just take that and I will just duplicate that. So now we've just got that main vocal track. And then now I'm just going to use inserts because I'm only going to have this come up a couple times and it's going to be completely wet because I'm just using this as a throw. So this is the only time that I would leave inserts 100% wet is if you're using it as a delay throw because you can just kind of line it up evenly with that and then you don't have to you know offset it by a bar or whatever. So I would do something like this. Uh, let's have a one fourth. We can actually keep this uh, you know what we'll keep it we'll keep it mono just because we haven't really done that yet. Let's add verb suite. We'll just do something pretty big. And then let's go ahead and filter. And then I'll just talk about things that you can do kind of on specific delay throws because I like to do this a lot. So let's go ahead and listen to what it would sound like. I lost, I loved and I lost, like everything falls apart. So we're only going to have it on that one word, right? I loved and I lost, like everything. So a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll kind of play around with the format. Um, and Auto-Tune Pro is really, really good about this, so either drag it down. Drag it up. Or you can even keep the format the same and you can actually tune it down. And drag it up. So now you've got this delay throw. 
And then what you can do is you can even start to do kind of super, super weird stuff. So like, let's bit crush it a little bit. Let's add, and I'm just throwing on random stuff. I'm not even really paying attention to what I'm throwing on because a lot of this is just really, really experimenting, right? So let's add micro shift on. Let's add some of this stuff like before the delay and the reverb. Let's turn that bit crusher down just a bit. Falls apart. I loved and I lost. Like everything falls apart. I loved and I lost. Like everything falls apart. You could even go in and you could add like really, really, really heavy distortion. So let's just do, I don't know, let's do like an amp simulator just because why not? So you could even go in and do something like this where you're just absolutely ruining it. But since it's really only coming in on these one, you know, instances or situations, who cares? It's not like it really matters, right? So let's hear. And I'm not saying these are things that I would definitely do, but they're just ideas. So that could be cool. Um, a lot of the time when you start adding a lot of uh, like saturation and stuff to things like this, they'll start to kind of lose their quality and like the actual words. So that's why like if you've listened to uh, Where Are You Now but like Bieber and Jack U, right? The little doo 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 in the background. It sounds like that because they've just pitched it up and they've added so much saturation they've basically killed any kind of uh, recognizable quality of a lyric so you could always do stuff like that on your delay throws and a lot of the time I would just call this like you know delay throw one fourth and then you've got that so between you know having something like your ad libs where you've got them set up as an insert and then having something like your lead vox where you've got all of your uh, you know effects kind of send set up and then doing something where you've got your delay throws right here just doing you know really really specific things like your tuned up delay throw, or your tuned down delay throw, or your crushed delay throw. Uh, you've really got so many options to start adding your flavor with delays and reverbs, specifically on vocals, but not just on stuff like this. You can use this on synths, you can use this on guitars, you can use this on percussion. Uh, reverbs and, and delays to me are the number one way to kind of add ear candy in because you can kind of salvage the elements that you already have. You're not having to add a bunch of new shit to where the, the track feels cluttered or it feels claustrophobic or it feels like it's something that you've already done before and you're able to kind of recycle those elements and have them fill the space that they weren't already filling. So yeah, I think definitely try the reverbs in all of these different styles. Try them as an insert. Try them as, you know, sins or effects tracks that you set up. Try them as little throws where you keep them 100% wet on the insert, but you can just do whatever you want with them. There are literally endless possibilities. Hopefully this video kind of helped you distinguish what kind of reverb and delay you need, kind of what situation you need to use them in, and then ways to just spice those up. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this. As you can see, there are a million things you can do with reverbs and delays. We really only talked about them in terms of vocals, but you can use them on guitars, synths, percussion, drums, all kinds of stuff. But hopefully this kind of helped you decide whether to use a reverb or a delay kind of on the track itself or to go ahead and do something like a parallel send or an effects track where you can blend it with multiple different you know lead vocals background vocals etc and then hopefully this kind of helped you decide what kind of reverbs you want to set up do you want to set up long short room hall chamber do you want to set up slapback delays do you want to set up delays with filters do you want to go ahead and post process any of that stuff to kind of give you a little bit of extra flavor and character so definitely use some of these tips and tricks because to me reverb and delay is really 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 crucial in creating a really spacious wide open big mix and having the ability to know what reverb and what delay to use and what situations to use those in and then how to process those situations situations uh, I think really really makes it a lot easier for those to sit right in a mix so you can afford to drive the reverb a lot harder and the vocals not going to get washed out because you were able to kind of control the highs and the lows with some EQ and you were able to kind of you know spread it with a stereo widener or you were able to you know bit crush a delay to add a little bit of extra flavor or you know drag the formant down all of those things are really really cool ways to get the reverb and the delay kind of out of your way in your main mix and still have that flavor so definitely try these options out let us know uh, you know what your reverb and delay tricks are and then also let us know what kind of videos you guys want to 
to see in the future. We will be back next Tuesday and Thursday with more videos. If you want, please go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. We really, really appreciate it. It helps us out. If you are looking for any samples or anything like that, definitely go check out our website, makepopmusic.com. We've got samples, presets, courses, MIDI packs. We've got blog posts. We've got all of our videos on the YouTube channel posted there. So we really appreciate it. Join the group. But as for now, that's going to be it. I will see you guys next time. Much life, make pop music. Peace out.